Hey guys, before we get into today's episode, I wanted to let you guys know that we have a free one week workshop coming up November 14th. Details aren't up quite yet, but visit www.tier1trading.com. Also follow us on social media and you'll hear all about how you can register and attend. Hey guys, today we're going to talk about opportunity cost and balancing your life and your trading. By the way, if you guys haven't done so already, make sure you check out our website, www.tier1trading.com. We got some cool stuff over there. We got some free workshops for you to check out. We also have that 14 day risk free trial membership where you can get on the platform, take some courses, meet the community, download some software, and it's all risk free. What I mean is that there's no sneaky auto bill or anything like that. After your 14 days are up, you are simply removed. Now, Today's topic comes from a pretty cool email I got from a client that I work with and obviously was so good that I wanted to share with you guys as well. And he says, Akil, hope you're keeping well, um, blah, 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 the introduction stuff that you guys don't want to hear about, but I'm trying to reset my trading a little bit. Long story short, it's been a hectic year. Majority of my trading has been on the daily time frame, as that's the only time I can consistently look at the charts. But now that things are calming down a little bit, things meaning life, I'm exploring strategy development on the four hour chart. Now, the concern that I have with the four hour is that it's given me or that it might give me a sense of false freedom. Um, I can reliably check three out of the six candles in a day. Two of them will be when I'm asleep. One of them will be during my main family time. Um, I can glance and check orders, etc., but not much more. How do you approach four hour trading in terms of not clock watching, right? Four hours, the, the time frame that I take the majority of my trades on, four hour and one hour. How do you approach four hours, uh, sorry, how do you approach the four hour trading in terms of not clock watching or allowing it to encroach on your family time slash other times that you have in your adapted routine. Um, for example, if you're out for the afternoon, then a meal, right? Living the trader dream with your kids. Um, do you just accept that there will be candles and potentially signals missed? Or do you make sure you always are back to check the chart during those windows? My concern is that the four hour chart can give me a false sense of freedom. You can move around and live your life, but you can't stray away for more than four hours from your charts. And this is a great question because it is a question that I don't think many traders ask themselves, at least many traders, many newer traders, right? If you followed us here at, at, at Tier 1 Trading, uh, something that Jason and myself have always preached is that you want to fit trading around your lifestyle, right? And I know that's a hard thing to believe. If, if you would have asked me when I first started trading, I, I wouldn't have believed it either because I, I was so kind of in the grind, in the hustle, right? In the mix that I was just willing to work. And I, I did work about 12 hours a day, 10, 12 hours a day on my craft. I didn't care about anything else. I had to get that momentum rolling. But it's important to remember why we are doing the things that we do, right? And I can speak for myself personally, but many of you guys would probably agree that, right? One of the reasons you want to get into trading in the financial markets is financial freedom, right? We all want financial freedom. We all want money. Um, we all want to live our lives, have all of our basic needs fulfilled and do fun stuff, right? Go out and have a meal with the kids. But more importantly is time freedom. I think that is the most important thing. And that is a luxury that trading can provide us time freedom because we can make our own hours. We can trade on our own hours, especially if you're in the Forex market, you got 24 hours a day, you can get after it. We can create our own schedule and really live our perfect life. And in that way, we have time to actually enjoy the financial freedom, right? What is the point of being financially free if you don't have time to enjoy it? Think about all these stories. You now, I've had a luxury in my career to, to talk to a lot of like millionaires and multimillionaires. Some of them are very happy, the ones that have time freedom. Some of them are miserable because they are company owners, right? And they are on the clock all the time and they're bad parents, they're bad husbands, um, they're bad friends because everything they have is invested in their business. All of their time is invested in their business and they really don't have any time to enjoy it. And we have conversations about, hey, like you got all this money, but you're gonna die unhappy and unfulfilled. And that's a 
easier said than done, that balance. It depends on what career path you're taking. But specifically in trading, that's something we need to deal with because if you're going to be a trader for financial freedom, and this is one of the reasons I got out of day trading, if you're going to be a trader for financial freedom, and, and let's say you plan on day trading nine hours a day, that's a rough life. That is a very rough life. And, and yes, you can make money hand over fist, but that's a very stressful life and all of your time is taken up during trading. So when you're thinking about your trading style, we need to think about things, right? How often do I want to be in front of my chart? How much chart time do I want to spend? How often do I want to check him? Am I willing to sacrifice this? Am I willing to kind of, you know, tell my kid, hey, we can't, I can't go to your play today because I got a position that I'm watching. These are tough choices. And I'm not here to tell you which is wrong or right because that's going to be an individual decision. But I responded to this trader and I, I kind of give him an idea of what I do and just to give him a sense of how it, it may not be as time consuming as you think. And first and foremost, right, and, and every trader is different, but I am not a high frequency trader, meaning I don't churn out a lot of trades per month. I would say typically, and it seems to get lower and lower every year, but typically I only average about 15 trades a month. Again, this is a majority of my trades come on the four hour time frame. Now, out of those 15 trades a month, I would say about 60 plus percent are advanced pattern formations. And our advanced pattern formations is a specific kind of trading strategy that I trade. And the thing about advanced pattern formations that is different than my other trades is that advanced pattern formations are the only trades that I'm super aggressive. So when an advanced pattern formation is is completing and, and forming, we have a very specific price that we look for the completion at. And I'm very aggressive at this price, meaning that once I have that price, I just put a limit order on that price. I put a stop loss, of course, there as well for protection, and I don't need to watch it. I don't really care what else happens. It's just, hey, once that price point is hit, I'm in the trade. So there's not a lot of management that has to be done with advanced pattern formations until you're in the trade. You can kind of just set it and forget it. You get a little alert when your order is triggered, then you know how, hey, get my targets on here and do this and blah, blah, blah. But as far as kind of tracking the trade, it doesn't really require too much attention. So that's 60 plus percent of my trades. So again, I only told you I take about 15, right? So the rest of my trades, which is a very small number, these are going to be more active entry. So at market entry type trades, meaning that I'm waiting for price to come to a very specific level. Once that uh, once that level is hit, I'm looking for a very specific candlestick formation or candlestick combination in order to get involved in the trade. So these are trades that I need to actively watch. But again, they are far and few between. Also, the thing about having a consistent routine is this. I do the majority of my analysis in the morning, right? So the majority of my analysis usually kicks off around six o'clock in the morning. I, I do a, a full round of top-down analysis. I map out and write down everything that's on my radar. What do I need to pay attention to? What do I not need to pay attention to? And because I'm trading on such a high, high time frame, a four-hour chart, there typically aren't any surprises, right? I typically know when a trade needs to be watched days, hours in advance, right? Aside from some type of high impact news event that you know will push the market 200 pips down, we're usually working with average true ranges anywhere between what, 50 pips and maybe 150 pips for your, your very active pairs. So if a trade is not in that range, it's probably not a good chance it's gonna happen on that day. If a trade is somewhere within that range, it's still probably a good chance it's gonna happen in a couple of hours. And if I, even if I need a specific entry, let's say I need a something very simple. Let's say I need a three bar reversal, right? Well, I need three things to happen. I need one bar to come into that potential reversal zone and hold. I need another bar to give me some type of consolidation, loss of momentum, rejection candle, something like that. And then I need a higher, high, higher close, like engulfing type of candle before I can actually enter the trade. Now, remember, we're trading a four hour chart here, right? So one candle is four hours, all right? That's that high momentum candle down into that level, boom. All right, my consolidation, my reversal candle or my um, rejection candle, that's two candles, right? That's another four hours. My higher, high, higher close, that's three candles, that's another four hours, that's 12 hours. 
So even if something is getting close to that zone, there's probably about eight or 12 hours before I can actually get involved. I know for some of you guys, that's like torture. Like, what do you mean you gotta wait eight hours? <laughs> like, let me enter now, right? And that's a, a pretty bad mistake that many traders make, including myself, but it's the truth. So what that means is that I have time to kind of know when I need to, to plan my day, I guess you can say, and know when I need to be in my chart. So, you know, again, fortunately, I'm in a position where, um, you know, I, I get to make my own schedule. I know it, it's, I hate saying that because many of you guys aren't in that position, but I am someone that does have the flexibility to be like, hey, if I have a meeting, hey, I got to push this meeting back. Um, I hate canceling things with the kids, but I can always take the cell phone out, right? I have flexibility where it's like, hey, if I know I need to be around my charts at 1 p.m., I can be around my charts at 1 p.m. And, and fortunately, in these days, and this is different than when I first started trading, the mobile apps are so good now, right? I used to bash on mobile apps and be like, no one should ever do trading from their phone. And I still don't think you should perform technical analysis from your form. That could be, be, be uh, being a dinosaur. I guess it depends on what type of trader you are. But the mobile apps are so good now that if you know what you're looking for, if you know what you're waiting for, you can easily pull it, pull it up on your phone and you know you're looking for that one thing. Okay, did we get that? Boom. Enter trade, stops, targets, boom, and be done. So it doesn't take that much management. It's not like you have to, you know, back in the day when I first started trading, I remember rushing back to my my house just to make it in time for the one o'clock candle only to get no signal, right? I'm, I'm, I'm panting and sweating and whatnot and be like, ah, signal didn't happen. And I you know, almost got like four or five speeding tickets and hit three or four people trying to make it back. We don't have to deal with that in this time. But the point is, if you're organized, and like most things, organization, right? If you're organizing, you know what you're looking for, then you're gonna know in, in advance that, hey, either I need to pay attention to something or I don't need to pay attention to something. And then you can give the, the proper warnings. You know, Maybe you can tell your boss, hey boss, you mind if I get a, a five minute break at, at one o'clock, I just need to do this one thing. Or maybe you lie to your boss, hey, you know, you know, had a little Chipotle for dinner, you know, it's not sitting right in the stomach. You mind if I gotta take a little bathroom break for a little bit, right? And you sneak the laptop out in there. You've done it, don't laugh, you've done it. Some of you are feeling guilty right now. Um, some of you are bosses out there and I just, gave up your employees, my bad. <laughs> um, or you can tell your family like, hey, you know, we're gonna go to the park, but like, hey, at one o'clock, daddy's gotta go somewhere and check on something. You just play by yourself, I'll be there for 10 minutes. So I, I think that's the best way to handle it. it. It's It shouldn't be as overwhelming as you thought, as you think. Now, the one thing where I do draw the line, and again, this may be because of my current, I, 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 again, a lot of this journey, and this is what's cool about listening to the Trading Coach podcast, is you're going to hear me change, right? Because I change as a person um, because my values shift, right? Family has always been important to me, but it's much more important to me now than it was when I started trading and I didn't really have a family. It will probably be, it's going to sound weird, it will probably be less important in the future as my kids get older and the experiences are different. Like, you know, a field trip is different when they're a grown man, when they're a 15 year old in high school where they don't need their dad there versus they're seven years old and, and this is all cool. So I may shift back to, you know, being hey, family second, not family second, but you know, kind of, hey, I got to do this trading wise first and then family just hold on a little bit versus right now where it's like family will always become first. But I told Stuart, you know, there are kind of things that I draw a line in the sand on. So like if I'm out on like a vacation, we're at a, a theme park, like unless this is like the trade of the year, um, sometimes I'll make a conscious effort. I'll say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm not trading today. And that could be a hard thing to do. Again, I'm, I'm fortunate in my career where I've been trading long enough to have a good career. I'm, I'm not relying on any given trade to kind of pay the bills. I, I've also grown businesses as well. So I have that supplemental income. So there's not that pressure of, hey, if I miss this one pound yen trade, I'm, I'm done for the year. That, that, that is part of it, I won't lie. Um, but sometimes I do draw a line and say, hey, I have to disconnect from work because I've made the mistake in the past of being too connected to work and, and I don't wanna burn the things that I'm working for. So if you're out there and, and anyone has this, uh, any ideas that you wanna share, feel free. You know, this, this podcast goes up on YouTube. Shoot a comment under the YouTube video. Um, you can shoot me a DM as well and, and maybe we can revisit this subject as well or maybe I can just forward your advice uh, to the trader at hand. But I hope it gives you a good idea of kind of finding that balance between life and trading and also understanding that you don't need to actively spend as much time on the charts as you think 
if you're very strategic, deliberate, and organized on the front side. Hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Hey, if you ever want to work with me, you can do so easily. Just sign up at www.tier1trading.com. We offer coaching, we have mentorship, we have programs, we have a great community of traders as well. So you're not just getting me, you're not just getting Jason Greystone, you're getting a handful of not only professional traders, some of which are running hedge funds and trading for prop firms, but also newer traders in the same boat as you. So again, the accountability is there, the motivation is there, the inspiration is there. If you're serious about becoming a consistently profitable trader, tier one trading is where you need to be.